Hi there. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to uh, set up one of the ideal gas law experiments. Um, in this video, I'm going to go over Charles's law. Um, just to preface, Charles's law states that under constant pressure, the ratio of the initial volume to the initial temperature of a gas is equal to the final volume over the uh, final temperature. And we're going to verify that. So for equipment we have today, um, using the 850 universal interface, Attached to this, we have two passport sensors. The first is our quad temp sensor, which has four temperature sensor outputs, but we're only using one. Um, and we're gonna be moving it from uh, bucket to bucket here. And then we have the connection for the rotary motion sensor up here. So the way this works is we have three different buckets of water. They're clearly labeled here. We have hot water over here, room temperature, and then ice water. What we're gonna be doing is taking the um, temperature probe that's in the hot water right now, and we're going to be taking this can, which has a volume of gas in here, um, which we need to be cal which needs to be calculated, which I will go over a bit later. And we're going to be moving this uh, can into each of these three buckets uh, at the same time as we move the uh, temperature sensor. And so we're going to collect volume and temperature data in each of these buckets. Um, to do this, we have the heat engine apparatus, which has some fixed volume inside. Um, you may notice at the top here that we have a, um, a mass hanger with some masses on it. The uh, mass that is on here is equal to the mass of the piston that is um, outlined right here on the uh, base of the heat engine to um, offset the force of gravity. So we'll get better measurements. Um, so to start off, um, let me open up capstone here. Um, get right started into this. All right, so when you open up capstone, this is what it's going to look like. Um, so for this particular experiment, we're actually going to be using a manual entry process here. And this is ideal because this will generate a table and a graph, which is what we really want for this. So a few things first um, to go over but before we start this, so a couple things to keep in mind here and things that we're assumptions we're taking for granted. Um, we move the can into these different baths of water. Um, we're going to take the assumption that the temperature of the gas inside the can is the same as the temperature inside the um, uh, heat engine apparatus. And we'll find out later uh, that that does still in fact work. Um, so to start off first, we need to define the volume of gas that we're working with, the initial volume. So that's the volume of the can here, plus the volume um, of where I have the piston set right now. And right now the piston is set at the 39 millimeter mark. And I will go ahead and set up that calculation here. So we'll open up this tab, and actually let's change our view here. Let's get the calculator. Oh, it's already there. Open up the calculator. And we're gonna make a calculation for the volume of the piston in the can. And the volume will be varying inside the piston by way of this rotary motion sensor, which will be tracking the position of linear movement. So we're gonna be doing this all in millimeters. So we'll just name this something appropriate. I'm gonna call it piston and can. And this is going to be equal to, now I've already done this calculation ahead of time. So I use calipers here um, to measure the inside diameter measure the height, find the volume, but we have this rubber stopper here. So we need to actually account for the volume of the stopper um, that is removed from this. And um, after calculating this, and then um, assuming that the piston has not moved, I did touch it, so let me just confirm that, uh, oh wow, that did go up quite a bit. So we'll just make a whole new calculation here. It's at the 45 millimeter mark. Um, so to do that, we're going to find the volume, which will be uh, 45 millimeters. Actually, here, let me rotate this just so I can see it better. Uh, we'll say 44. So 44. Um, actually, sorry. 
there is an extra four millimeters at the bottom that isn't on the scale that we need to account for. So we're going to add that in there. So 44 plus four gives us the 48. Put this in parentheses. Um, the diameter of the piston is 32 millimeters. So to find the volume of this cylinder, we need the height um, times pi times pi right down here times the uh, radius, which is going to be 16.25 squared squared. Um, and that button's right here. That'll give us squared. So that's the um, volume for the uh, uh, piston here. Now I've already gone ahead and calculated the uh, volume of the, uh, the the can and the stopper. Uh, the can with the stopper is 177 milliliters. Um, so we first actually need to make sure we get everything in milliliters. Right now we're in millimeters cubed. So to get all that, we need to divide by a thousand. And let's just close this whole thing in parentheses again. All right. And then we need to add to that the volume of the can, which I said was 177. That's the can minus the stopper. Oops. All right, so now that we have that, now we're gonna be experiencing some movement inside this piston. So we need to account for the changes that are going to occur um, during the measurement process. So the change in volume that we're gonna see is only going to occur in the piston. Um, so we're gonna be tracking the linear movement of this right here. So we take this, we subtract from that the value of the, um, once again, pi. We'll get pi in there, times the radius squared, which is 16.25 squared. We'll use this button again, times the height or the position of the um, uh, rotary motion sensor. So we click on this little colorful triangle and it'll open up our data. And we have right here the position. We need to make sure we change this to millimeters. That's what we're measuring in. And then we can go ahead and close the parentheses on this portion. Actually, uh, let's do the, just divide by a thousand to get everything into uh, milliliters and then hit enter. And then we'll enter the units. Once again, this is in milliliters. And let's just click on this just to make sure that everything looks correct on here. Um, we got the uh, first term. Uh, let's see, I do have a times in there, right? Yep, 48 times pi plus 1, 177. Okay, everything looks good there. So now that we have that in there, we can actually make that a data set here. And we will select the volume of the piston and can. And then we're going to select the temperature for the other column. And then over here, we're gonna once again, um, we're going to put temperature here. Where'd it go? On the x-axis. And we're going to put the um, measurement we just made up here. Okay, so some important things to note. Um, when you start this or before you start this, we need to go into the hardware setup and we need to make sure um, that we zero the sensor. And we don't want this to zero at the start of each measurement because uh, otherwise we'll lose anything we had set up previously, but we do want to zero it now. So doing this now, any, uh, any movement downward um, will be tracked and upward will be tracked from this reference point that we just set up. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And we can close the hardware setup. And we need to open up the recording options here. And we want to do this in uh, keep mode. So this will let us um, move the can and the uh, temperature sensor to each bucket, let them equalize, and then we'll keep that data point and then move both to the next bucket and so on. 
Uh, so let's get started with that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit preview. And you'll see both um, columns will populate with values. And so I'm going to stick the can in here. And so what we'll see is uh, we should see that the uh, volume is increasing and the temperature is as well. And once everything is kind of settled, we'll let it settle here. Uh, it's important to hold the can by the stopper uh, because your body will transfer energy into the system through the can. So uh, make sure that you do, uh, do touch the, hold it by the stopper. All right, everything appears to be equalized. So we'll go ahead and keep that one. Now we'll go ahead and move to the room temperature. And we'll let everything equalize there. Just let it settle. Okay, it seems to be pretty well settled there. And then we'll do one more. Move this over to the ice bath. Get the uh, probe in there really well. Okay. And the same thing. Submerge the can in the cold water and let everything equalize. There we go. And let's say we're good. The thing looks like it's just about well equalized. All right. And now we'll stop recording. So we have collected all three data points. So now that we've done this, um, we can actually go in here. And let's just scale to fit nicely. So you see, we have a pretty nice straight line. Um, let's actually change the units here to Kelvin. Um, there we go. And if we apply a linear curve fit, we should see that we have a um, uh, relatively good fit. And if we just take the ratios of each of these, um, so we'll just add another column here. And what we'll do actually is we'll just create a new one. Um, whoops, not user entered. We're just going to create a new calculation here. And we'll call it, uh, we'll just call it V over T. So we can actually see. And so what we're going to do, um, we're just going to take the ratio of the volume, the piston can volume. So we can actually call that as, oops, we have to make sure we type it the exact same. Oops, piston and can. Make sure piston and can great divided by the temperature measurement. And uh, let's do this in Kelvin. And we'll just put this as milliliters per Kelvin. Let's see here. All right, we'll close that. And now we should be able to do 
now you can see these ratios are very close to each other, um, which, which is what we expected from this experiment. Um, and by doing this, we have verified that Charles laws does in fact work and um, <clears throat> that the differences in temperature between the can and the actual piston are negligible. So.